All right, you're watching the marketplace. Now, the World Cybercrime Index, which identifies the globe's key cybercrime hotspots as three African countries in the list of top 20, including Ghana, Nigeria, and South Africa. The data was gathered through a survey of 92 leading cybercrime experts from around the world uh, who are involved in cybercrime intelligence gathering and investigations. The experts identified five key categories, including technical uh, products or services, attacks and extortion, data or identity theft, scams, cashing out or money laundering. And join us for Let's Talk Tech on this matter and others. It's lead for Eyes of Africa, Henry Kobler. Uh, good afternoon to you, Henry. Any surprises there? Good afternoon, Daryl. So um, no surprises. Um, these are what we've actually been battling with if you looking at the index when uh, the cybersecurity units uh, definitely from their list of um, issues that they've actually been, been reported at most of the times. And so again, if you're looking at Ghana, Nigeria, and South Africa, it's, it's always been on the grow. I mean, uh, Ghana had been on the block on, on PayPal's list for a very long time based on some of these occurrences that um, that is happening in the cyberspace. And so um, much more, I mean, when it comes down to scams, I think it's a very, very um, open secret in Ghana. I mean, we've had a number of people are actually being targeted. Um, we've had Hadja for real being uh, pushed up into the U.S. courts. I mean, battling with, with issues of, of such kind. Uh, money laundering is actually coming up strongly. Uh, credit card fraud. I mean, money mulers, illicit uh, virtual cash uh, currency platforms are all popping up again. And, and again, you'd realize that we we're having some of these coming through because we're having quite a number of Nigerians coming to Ghana. Uh, again, because you're having most of the IPs being flagged, and so Ghana seems to be on the open slightly. And so being on the 13th position and Nigeria being on the 5th position, you can actually understand uh, the influx which is coming in. South Africa, I think that um, it's, it's only because they have some quite good systems. But again, quite a number of people are always going through with, with money laundering issues. Um, for me, technical products which are coming in, in terms of malware coding and uh, compromising of systems, I think that we, we're also coming up strongly in that regard where uh, there have been quite a number of reports on breaking to systems uh, which is coming in. And again, some, some of them coming in in terms of attack. Right, uh, appears Henry Kobler is frozen there. We'll try and get him back on uh, to continue with the discussion there. Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa among uh, the top 20 when it comes to uh, cybercrime Hot spots. I uh, want to head back to our conversation with uh, Mike uh, Henry Kobler on uh, the news that Ghana is amongst countries that uh, were in the top 20 uh, hot spots when, com when it comes to uh, uh, cybercrime. Uh, we are going to continue that conversation with Henry because he's joined me on Zoom. Uh, so, Henry, we're talking about uh, the lapses in the system that, caused, uh, that causes us to be. Uh, a hot spot. How can we, going forward, manage uh, our cybersecurity issues and ensure that we uh, do not become a hotbed for cyber crimes? We, we have the agency that is set up to sort of take care of everything when it comes down to cybersecurity. Um, I've had lots of interactions with them, and I think that they're sort of working very well uh, to put things in place. I think that it's more about being able to have the loss grip are people that are caught up in this, um, generally getting to make sure that uh, it comes out strongly. And know the Bank of Ghana set up also putting in a lot of effort in curbing some um, criminal uh, crimes when it comes down to financial crimes online. And uh, I think that it's basically about how the policies and then the law basically takes course when most people are found wanting. Okay. What, I want us to turn to another story we, we are looking at in terms of uh, tech trends. So. We, we all love graphic. The Graphic Communications Group is uh, trying to uh, re-strategize so um, as to recapitalize its operations. I want us to start uh, a conversation about the newspaper business in the age of uh, digitalization. What's the future? Um, generally, it depends on how a company basically comes in as strong as they can to bring some level of innovation into what they're sort of putting out there. I've seen quite a number of innovation in terms of QR codes being incorporated into newspapers. I'd also seen them push up a digitalization agenda where they had their mobile application being pushed out there. I don't know what's the numbers that comes in in terms of the downloads and how many people are buying the newspapers online and all of that. 
Uh, but I think that there should be some more level of innovation coming in place uh, to be able to push what is normally uh, put in as newspaper uh, turned up into being more innovative and, and technically available for people to be able to use. I'm looking at how they can go from pushing very sensitive and uh, limited access uh, information and being able to sell that on their digital platforms, such as data analytics and all of those things. If those are coming strongly on their mobile application, I'm thinking that they're going to make some level of headways and also make sure that at least you're having these speakers digitally available for people. And the payment systems that sort of um, work on these platforms are very easy to uh, make payments wherever you are in the world. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you what uh, innovation would be. I mean, if you're, if you're in this kind of a business. Generally, I, I would be selling very limited data, uh, making sure that if there's some level of statistics um, that's available, um, research works that are available, selling such works on these platforms uh, should be making some level of money. Um, I've seen how Bloomberg and uh, most of the international media basically will have to, to pay just to read some particular news items, which is uh, having quite a number of data research pushed in. And so that's one part of it. Um, again, being able to sell the newspaper digitally is something I've already seen them do, but I'm looking at how they're promoting it. There needs to be that 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 intentional promotion. I've seen how ECG had to put in a lot of um, promotion and marketing into their power up. I'm, I'm looking at the same thing for graphics. If they could do a very uh, long push with that in, in terms of pushing that to us, I think that they're going to make some good money from it. All right. Uh, let's turn to the smartphone market. Some news from there as well. And uh, Samsung uh, regaining the top spot, 20.8% uh, market share in the first quarter uh, of this year. Sorry, iPhone users. <laughs> I have loved um, Samsung from, from days, um, only because of some reasons. It's, it's quite easy to have a lot of mobile applications hit on, on Samsung, and the innovations are quite easy. People are able to develop applications and do their testing on, on the go. And so it makes it quite easy for innovation to start with. And so people that would generally want to um, have some level of innovation from the developer side, be able to just jump on Android and run. Um, in terms of market by prices, I think that Samsung has um, uh, quite a number of products, which makes it quite easy for people to jump on Samsung and buy based on their budget rates. And so you really don't have to struggle to just have the high end phones from Samsung. Um, generally, if you're looking at this year, they've done quite um, a good one. Um, they've actually had like a, quite a number of shipments of up to like 7.8%, which is amounted to almost about 280 mm. million um, units. So just in January and March, which is a lot when it comes down to that, where they're actually getting some 20% in market mm. share. And then sometimes Apple is actually dropping to like 17.3%, which is a shame a bit. Uh, generally, you're seeing Xiaomi also pick up. What's some happening some with Apple though? One minute. Generally, I think that um, it's more about the US, UK, US, China war. Generally, you're having Chinese, uh, Chinese governments pushing that a lot of um, iPhones are actually not being used by Chinese employers. Same as in the US, you're having, uh, up, um, what do you call it, Chinese phones struggling to make the market there. And so that disparity comes in, in, in as large for them. But you realize that Samsung uh, is always just on the level to just be everywhere. And I think that also because the Samsung Galaxy 24 basically comes with a lot of AI. I mean, a lot of people are starting to enjoy the AI trend there, so they would always jump on uh, a platform that has more about to offer when it comes out to AI. All right. Uh, Henry Kobler, I don't know I'm tempted to call you Michael. <laughs> Henry Kobler, lead eyes of Africa, thank you so much. Uh, great to see you. I appreciate it.